My name is Fred Cush. I hope you can hear this. Pull the mic up. My name is Fred Cush. I live in La Crosse. We've lived here for 34 years now. Uh, came here because it was God's country. I want to know, and I, I'm guessing the rest of you would like to know, exactly what are we getting out of this? I know what Warren Buffett's getting out of it. And he's going to give us a billion dollars if we pick the winner of the Final Four. Maybe that's what we're going to get next year. I would like to know, I'd like them to be asked and have them publicly state, what's the benefit for the people along the line? I am a former history teacher. I remember the robber barons, teaching my students about the robber barons. The descendants of the robber barons are alive and well. And I also remember a movie called Network. When I can't remember Howard's last name. He stood up, he opened the window and said, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah. And it's just absolutely wonderful to see this kind of turnout tonight. And I hope we don't forget this as we move forward, ladies and gentlemen. It can't be just one night. We've got to be doing this all the time as these opportunities come up. So we, we can talk about what's wrong, but we, what we've got to do is take action. And I would really like to see these people come to a table and engage in the dialogue. Speak right, speak right into the mic. Is it on? Yes. Okay. Okay, so first of all, um, we need to look at the other side of this. Um, BNSF employs thousands and thousands in our country, and we need jobs. Everybody knows that. It's not a matter of if the oil is going to be shipped. It's a matter of how. And if you back up a minute, Last Friday, President Obama just stopped, again, the pipeline. If that pipeline was able to be built and finished, the oil would be shipped through rail and truck. And that's another issue. I, I think everybody that, that's really concerned needs to urge their politicians to let this pipeline be built because it's better for the environment because rail and truck gives off more emissions that is more harmful for, for the environment than this pipeline is going to be. So the other thing is not, not building up enough rail is halting other goods from being shipped. We have piles of corn that can't be shipped because they're moving the oil. So we need, we need, we need more track to get more goods to, to lower the cost. We've, we've recorded your concern. Karina Lukens, and I'm channeling Fred Cush, and I didn't even know that. Um, I came because I live next to the marsh, and I'm fierce about the marsh and safety of the marsh and the idea of one of these things going through there. Taking that area away and then, of course, contaminating it is just appalling to me. But as I sat here and listened, I, uh, what is this? I thought this was the 21st century, and we have big business telling us, you will do this, you will do this, you will do this. We will contaminate your homes, and you can pay for it. I'm sorry, that angers me. Thank you. Hi, Ann Board. Kyle, I happen to live in on Alaska. I am very familiar with the railroad, having been slightly connected with them for 14 years. Uh, if anybody here thinks you can trust the FRA, you're wrong. They've controlled the industry. GM had to recall cars. Toyota kills 12 people and recall a million cars. The railroad kills 47. They don't recall one oil cut. And there's 78,000 of them that are unsafe on these rails today, and that is admitted by the FRA and the rail industry. What is wrong with this picture? Let's get our legislators hot on this and put the screws to this organization, not the NSF, to the FRA, and have them straighten it out. And if you have any other concerns, the rumor, and I'll say this is rumor, but it's probably going to be true, there's going to be a third rail laid north of this city as a siding so the other two trains, when the rail is built between here and Logan, they're just going to be able to whistle right on by. Five board. seconds. All right, I have five seconds. I agree with Fred. You, this group should meet more often and discuss this and put these rail people 
up, up there in front and ask them the question. Thank you. My name is Jan Prokus, and I would like to speak up. Let's go down. Okay. Uh, I would like to zero in on the 85% of cars that are unsafe, that the government knows is unsafe. Let's try to put that on the top of the list and get those cars off the tracks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Others can come to the mics. My name is Carlene Roberts. Um, I agree with the young woman that spoke that uh, railways are an efficient way to transport our goods. And the tracks have been here before many of our homes were built near the tracks. The game changer is the toxic things that are being shipped on the railroad tracks with no responsibility taken by the train industry. Um, this has been a healthy community. We have good water, we have um, good healthy food available to us that's uh, locally grown. We have good medical centers, we have clean air. We have no control over what's going through our communities. I have a question about what our medical centers are thinking about all this. Um, what is their capability in taking care of burn patients and taking care of people who have inhaled these toxic fumes and all that goes with it? Is there is there even a drop in the bucket that they are able to offer us if there is an accident? Thank you. My name is Richard Millett. Um, I'm noticing two issues here. Uh, one is that uh, the right-of-way of the railroad, they've been here for how long, and you can be sure they're not going to get that right-of-way up. Um, they are using four and a half miles to travel east-west traffic, and I, I think you know the area is unfortunate that uh, no serious accidents have happened there. Uh, a second line, I think, really would help eliminate um, the risk of maybe a train going east as the westbound train is on that same track. The other issue is that you're mixing up, the one lady mentioned, the other issue is the uh, material that should be shipped by a pipeline, not the rail. Uh, Warren Buffett's making a fortune, I think. That's why he bought the stock, bought the company. Uh, the pipelines need to be opened up in this country. Okay. Thank you. There's another point to all of this also. I don't know if you Please realize, speak into the mic. I don't know if you realize that the passenger trains out of here have to all go on a side rail every time that an oil train or any other freight train needs to pass. My daughter went from here to Columbus last week. Columbus, Wisconsin, being somewhere between 90 and 100 miles, it took five hours. Thank you. We have open microphones. Uh, my name we is have Dave about 15, Miles. We're going to have about uh, 12 minutes. My name is Dave Miles. Uh, the Citizens Climate Lobby and Bernie Sanders, Senator, have proposed a, a costing of all carbon coming out of the ground and products coming in from other countries that aren't paying their pollution costs over there into a fund and return it to all Americans equally each year as a dividend, sort of like the Alaska oil dividend, which would give everybody in the country money each year to upgrade their homes and do efficiencies so that we don't need to keep going uh, back to fossil. So each year the costing would go up and so it would discourage people from doing the old technologies and give people money each year to personally invest in the new technologies. Thank you. Well, my name is David Fisher, and um, I would like to restate the obvious. And it's a question about one: we need to stop this this another additional rail from being built. We don't want it. no, and we should limit the number of trains that are allowed to go through the city, and there should be a speed limit as well as the issues of safety with each car. So that's basic stuff for our citizens. And I also applaud the young man who also needs to, to say that this is greater than our city, but we have some power and we have some needs. Thank you.